Hey, what's up, Lightbolt Joe here. Today we are going to discuss book one in the Gifted Clans novel series by Gracie Kim, The Last Fallen Star. This is a brand new series starting in the Rip Ride and Presents imprint. Um, it came out May 2021. So we have Riley O right here holding her sister Hattie's heart. We have her best friend Emmett all in black during his depression state. Does he have his bag of cookies with him? He does not. So what what are the gifted clans? What is who is the last fallen star? What is the last fallen star? Right? All these things. I read this book in less than a week. That's pretty impressive for me, just because like I'm very busy, but like some books like hold my attention and then others are just like boring as hell or just don't make sense. And then I've I've, I've reviewed a lot of books. A lot of books I've reviewed. Um, we've talked about books that I just cannot stand, not specifically in the Rick Ryden Presents book uh, imprint, but outside other books that are just, that should have never taken 12 pages to discuss why the sky is blue, things like that, right? This book is so fast and I'm obsessed with it because it surprised me. I don't surprise very easily. I could pick up on clues very quick. This surprised me. I was very surprised with this book. This book was absolutely incredible absolutely incredible you have these clans of korean witches um who who live literally in los angeles and there's six different clans that come together and or came together at some point uh doing magic this and doing magic that their clan leaders are all connected to a specific goddess who is a daughter of uh the earth mother the almighty earth mother that she is um so it's another, it's, it's all mythology. It's, it's different Korean mythologies. The last Korean book we have in the Rick, Ryder, Rick Ryder Presents book, uh, Dragon Pearl, that was about Korean mythology, but more so space travel as well with ghosts, um, which is an awesome book. And I've praised this numerous times, but this is different. This is another take on Korean mythology, bringing in the gods and goddesses, bringing in the divinity, bringing in the mythologies, bringing in the different mythological beasts and creatures that that are a part of this uh beautiful world that's created so we get these awesome characters i'm just gonna put this down here and it's just one thing after another and what i really love about well we're, we're gonna talk about some plot points and i'll put a you know waving my arms and spoiler alert but what's really interesting about this book is how it's present tense it's not past tense um it's like i look to emmett not, I looked at Emmett, kind of a thing. Um, so that was interesting. It took me a little while to get used to that, but once you got used to it, it's just smooth sailing ever since. Yes, there's a prophecy involved. Yes, it's a matter of seeing who's magical, who's not magical, why are the clans fighting, and who's behind the clans fighting, and who's lying about this, where, and what's the last fallen star, and why is it the key to salvation, you know, separating the god, the goddesses from the clans. Um, all of these different things, and there's actual explanation to it. But what I love the most about it is, yes, there's a prophecy, but there's no quest. Riley and Emmett go on an adventure around the city of Los Angeles to get information from this person, to talk to this person after they find a clue. It's a mystery. It's a mystery novel involving witches from different Korean clans in Los Angeles. What building is actually a secret por portal into another building kind of a thing, right? It's not an adventure book, and that's what's really cool about it. It's a mystery book. Yes, I, I understand. There's certain adventure aspects, and there's certain fight scenes, but at the core of this book, whether it was intended or not, it's a mystery novel. Where is the last fallen star? Why did the clans fight each other? Why are the Harangi clan, you know, separated from all of the rest of the clans? And we get answers. So, spoilers moving forward, okay? If you do not, if you have not read these books yet, if you have not read this one singular book yet, because it's only been out uh, June, July, August, September, October. Uh, it is currently October 17th when I am recording this, so it's only been out for five months. If you have not read this book at this point, I am going to talk about actual plot points. But the beginning part of this, this review um, was me gushing about how incredible this is. Okay, now we're going to speak spoilers. All right. The fact that it was the cave bear goddess all along creating all of this crap with the dark sun and dark moon pieces falling to earth and, and, uh, uh, what's her name? Mother Harangi or something? No, not Mother Harangi. Mother, 
the the main goddess, right? Uh, the, the main creator of all, um, who has her like pet guardian, like being the one guarding the library before Riley and Emmett go in to figure out how the hell to save Hattie, Riley's adoptive sister. Um, incredible that it was him all along guarding everything. But the fact that Riley herself is the last fallen star, when she goes off on that tangent on at the end, when she's literally about to face off against the cave bear goddess, um, and she's like, I am Riley. Oh, what is it? I gotta, I gotta find it. I don't want to butcher this quote. It was so good. I literally went, bro. All right, I can find this. I can find this. I can find this. I am the, the okay, page 302. <clears throat> page 302. I am the last divine star that fell from the God realm sky. I am the one who was destined to stop the end of all days. I have lost, but I have gained. Because I am strong and I am brave. My name is Riley O and I was born to shine. Bro, when I read that, I was like, bro. I, I'm bro and everything, but bro. Bro. Bro? Bro. Bro. I did not expect this much Oomph, coming out of this 13 year old girl who just celebrated her birthday um this took me by surprise i assumed as everybody else did in this book that the last fallen star was an actual artifact it was a piece and then she riley herself thought it was the golden compass that teo gave her but it wasn't she herself is the last fallen star and the guardian explained that that the goddess uh the the earth mother um quested him to split the two different pieces of the sun and moon pair. That way the, the dark sun piece is Riley O, who was then put into her Harangi mom, who then passed away during the fight, who then was adopted by her GOM parents. Woo! Crazy. Crazy. And then at the end, we have the prophecy of revealing that the last fallen moon piece is in the spirit realm, so then the, the next book is called The Last Fallen Moon, which is coming out in 2022. And we're going to be questing into the spirit realm. I cannot wait. Bro, I don't get this jazzed about certain things. And for me to get whoo, this jazzed about this book that says I am very opinionated on too many things. I nitpick everything that it should make sense or it should allude to this or whatever. I saw no flaws in this book. And how quick it was to hold my attention. I suffer from attention problems. And for me to, to, to be able to read this in less than a week, it's only 313 pages long plus a glossary. But for me to read this in less than a week, on top of two jobs, right? A full-time job and a part-time job. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at how incredible this book is. And I got me thinking... How do I put this in my list when I'm ranking all the Re Read, Ride, and Presents books? Because I've done that. So I actually had to stare at my books on my shelf, which is all the way up there because I have a loft bed. So my bed is right next to my bookshelf, as every reader should be. Your bed should be next to your bookshelf. I have my little pile of books right there. We got Paulo Santiago and the Forest of Nightmares next, which I'm not excited about because I hated the first book. But open minds, sure. And then uh, Pahua and the and the Soul Stealer is all about Hmong, H M O N G, culture, which is not specifically a country, but like it's like southwestern China. And then like the Chinese government had an issue with them at some point, from my understanding on this particular part of history. And then like they had to go into Lao Laos uh, Thailand. Um, so I'm excited because I don't know anything really about that culture, but. I'm excited to learn. I like learning. Anyway, um, okay, so I've always praised the Storm Runner, and then when we talked about City of the Plague God, I praised the hell out of City of the Plague the Plague God. I know the last review technically we did was Arusha and the City of Gold, which is still a great book and still a great series, but it's not my favorite parts of all of the Rewired and Presents books. Okay, so we're gonna base this on either individual book, if there's only one book in the series, quote unquote, or if it's a book with it's, if it's a series of many books. So, Storm Runner series by J.C. Cervantes is always number one for me. Incredible. Um, City of the Play God by Shwarit Sadi. I butcher his name all the time. I feel so terrible. Chada? Shwarit Chada? Um, incredible. Number two. Number three, The Last Fallen Star. Hands down, without a doubt. Number four, Dragon Pearl. 
Uh, number five, the Tristan Strong series. Number six, the Abu Shaw series. Number seven, Race to the Sun. Number eight, Sal and Gabby. And number nine, Paolo Santiago. So, it's a matter of questions since I just have her next to me. Will the Paolo Santiago and the Forest of Nightmares uh, be moving up in my list? Because I really don't like this series. This is literally the, my least favorite of the entire Read, Write, and Presents books. Um, just from how annoying and false advertising the first book was but i'm looking at that as a prequel to this book i'm assuming this is the main book but my assumptions could be false thankfully it's short so i'm going to try to do 50 to 60 pages a day depending on my attention span and then we have the pahua and the soul stealer uh th the Hmong uh traditions and myths and stories and you know culture that i am not familiar with i am very excited for this this is a little thicker this is a thicker boy uh, 415 right here. But, um, yeah, I'm curious where this one's gonna lie within my ranking. Because I'm ranking. But then we got the Carnival of the Lost Souls, or whatever the hell that's called. Um, that's like the short story collection, which I have no idea how I'm going to judge putting it in this category, because it's from all the authors. And then, uh, Tristan Strong is after that, and then there's someone after that. Oh, Daughter of the Deep, that's Rick Riordan's new book about uh, 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Um, things. We got things. We got things to read. We got things to discuss. And uh, yeah, The Last Fallen Star by Gracie Kim. When is The Dark Moon coming out? The Last Fallen Moon, Gift and Clans novel book two, summer 2022. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Incredible book. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did because I enjoyed it a lot. Mitra Mahalo.